But that's not all. There is the, uh, here for, for an you know, upper point of view, this is one of the grain boundary junctions, and this is uh, just here the magic subject. Put on, here is cerium oxide buffer layer, and on this buffer layer, the pigeon bearing copper oxide uh, grows in this C axis area. The copper oxide planes are horizontal. The rest of the substrate is cut so under uh, um, one of, uh, under, what is it? I think it's a one or no, it's one or three direction, and you have then the copper oxide plates in this area tilted. So in this interface, you get a grain boundary. What you find there is that the critical current, because it's a B-wave superconductor, I won't get into that for below my time totally, but what you find here is that the critical current is very strongly dependent on the angle in between the two. And imagine that in the barrier region, or in one of the electrodes, we have a brain which is slightly differently oriented than the rest. That means in this area, the critical current is already drastically changed. The other two types, which I would like to mention, is here the intrinsic junction in lithium compounds and also talium compounds. You have these very nice long planes, and you can try to cut out these planes uh, just within uh, argon ion milling, and you'll get then, if you're lucky, one coupling by the C reaction or more, and this gives you just also uh, junctions. Again, it's not easy to prepare it. It's, uh, uh, you get one, two, or three, or whatever junctions, and for sure not a technology to make uh, a real big circuit point. No, that's quite interesting. If you have a MOCVP machine or a or just a very nice uh, layer for layer technician around. Uh, you can deposit these layers just in a atomically flat way. And this is something which Vosevich uh, and RBS actually did <coughs> in the last time. And here, in this case, for piston compounds, you can artificially make these junctions where you have this superconducting layer and a uh, barrier layer in between and another superconducting layer here on top. So really do the uh, uh, building layer by layer of the whole stack. So, what is the status? Uh, polycrystalline junctions? No. Bicrystal? Yes. Template junctions? No. Maybe, uh, maybe this uh, possibility for the serum oxide uh, one has now just looked at the neighbors might be interesting. The other step batch number which forget about it. Radiation damage, if the lithography develops uh, further like it is currently doing, I think there might be a chance actually to use it. But uh, you still uh, are talking about lithography uh, in the nanometer range, and it should be at least a factor of 10 to 100 uh, in its resolution better of the edges than actually the width. <coughs> and we have the road type junctions and the pens and the planar junctions. I think they have a future. But this future depends much more on how much you invest into such uh, development than if it's possible at all. So, how much junctions do we need to realize a uh, real world device? And I'll just run quick to it. We had a super ADC project where we uh, were working on a second order. HDS modulator and uh, coupled to a semiconductor back part with the idea just let's have a simple system here in HDS which is fast and then a complex system which is slow. This is the design of the second order sigma delta converter of the modulator itself. It has something of the order, uh, depending on the layout, between 40 and 60 junctions. We were not able to make this circuit so that it really fully worked. Always one of the junctions or two of the junctions actually got it. We needed also just to couple this very fast uh, device to semiconductor electronics. And these are the RSF cube pulses in a simulation. 
And this here is the output pulse, so stretched so that semiconductors can work on it. And this is a circuit just with 20 junctions. And nearly every circuit that we make with here, you see just a realization on it worked. So there is a critical limit, at least in our technology, at 20, between 20 and say 50. So we can make this and the other things don't work at all. Strange. But we need to practice something of the order of 100 junctions. So what is the problem? Reproducibility and reproducibility and reproducibility and reproducibility. So if we do it really just in a sense that we want to make a practical device, this is the essence of it. And then long nothing and then flat stricken comes up, large area processing and so on. Um, in this, before this project, uh, just uh, we sat down that time um, with Alan Rickborg and I, and we thought it would, it was in 2001, it would be good if we could just combine LTS and HTS and take the speed advantage of LTS and complexity of uh, speed of LTS and complexity of LTS. But if one wants to do this, one needs a very good connection, superconducting connection, very good Jolson junction between low TC and high TC devices. And I started at that time, I hanged out Smith, the PhD student of mine on this project. And we tried to do is use a Remta configuration here with the HES based electrode and a gold interface and the niobium counter electrode. This worked, but it was always with a very low critical current and also just with a very low uh, reproducibility. What we did then is, in the next step, is we not only deposited here the uh, uh, electrode on top, but also just before that the thin superconducting epicolia. Uh, and this typical layer was only superconducting here in this regime. Suddenly, we had wonderful interfaces. This is gold, this is the IPCO, and this is the real raw material. And we got critical current densities of 20,000 ms per square centimeter, which is say, also typical from our Niobium junctions, and a very high reproducibility. Um, for instance, one can make small squids, in this case a uh, D-Wave squid on it, and you can shrink this area, and then you get uh, just a spontaneous flux uh, into it, and what you can do then is make many of these junctions. In principle, these are all small squids, and each of these islands here has two Jolson junctions in principle in it. And you can just by uh, 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 magnetic um, microscope, you can actually write the information into this squid, either just with the flux in one direction, this is blue, or flux in this direction, and this is red. And this is not just two junctions, these are 18,000 islands, and all these islands work, which is incredible if you compare that. Uh, that we were not able to make something of the order of uh, 50 junctions in HDS. What are the difficulties? I've already said the barrier here is one. But there's also difficulty just because of the direction dependence in this D wave for the superconductors. If you have, here, for instance, a, a direct connection, you get a quite high, very nice the front of the pattern, and it's a very transparent, you get current through it. If you just uh, are 45 degrees apart, it uh, looks very bad. And I can uh, then cultivate this again, and look into the different direction, How what is the dependence of the transport through such structures, 